what if it were the case, and it is the case, that one of the great mysteries of science fiction and of the cosmos would be able to, would be able to be solved in a very simplex fashion? There's something that the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians and uh, the Indians, and I translate ancient Greek and, and translating ancient Prakrit, um, now for nearly 20 years, I have the way I inherited the works of Dr. Ananda Kitish Kumaraswamy is granted to me by his son, Dr. Rami P. Kumaraswamy, who has since passed away. Uh, A.K. Kumaraswamy uh, knew 27 languages. He wrote 50-some uh, books and thousands of articles. He was once on the stamp of India. I'm very, very proud to be uh, an heir to his works. His son only gave me one condition that uh, I always uh, give his uh, father's works away for free. I'm not allowed to sell them, which, of course, I never have, obviously. Anyway, all the quotations relating to time um, from India to uh, ancient Greece to, uh, to Egyptians, various parts of the ancient world, all agree upon one thing. The notion that we're able to go back in time is absolutely impossible. The reason for that, and they didn't know that, they didn't relate it to field theory, but everything is fields, and as I said, fields are not particles, and we have to understand one thing about fields, or what time is specifically. Time is nothing other than the measure of magnitudes. Time is not a principle. It has no existence. Time doesn't exist. Well, of course time exists. No, a shadow doesn't exist either. Well, sure, a shadow exists. I mean, I can block the light and see the shadow. What this means, you actually have to work your brain in a different level than the common human being does. And you have to go back to a time, and this isn't taught anymore, of uh, ancient platonic retroduction to understand like what a shadow is what um, nothing is, or what the word that we've reified emptiness is. These are not things. They have no principality. What this means is that they, they are not subjects. They are posterior attributes in relationship to something else. A shadow is not a thing in and of itself, just as a dream is not. A shadow is a privation of light. Time is not an autonomous principle. Nikola Tesla himself said that space has no properties. And Tesla was right. He did not go out on, however, to elaborate why space has no properties. But the very simple uh, reasoning for this and in understanding field theory is that space is a posterior attribute, the wake front of the loss of inertia as we denote magnetism. Magnitude, of course, leaves in its wake space. The only thing that gives the universe magnitude is magnetism. I literally wrote the book on magnetism. Um, I can actually say, while well, many people have uh, discovered little bits and pieces of magnetism here and there, nobody's actually understood what magnetism is until I wrote the book. I'm on uh, the fourth edition now. The third edition is out. It's a completely free book. Let's talk about time travel, for example. We're not talking about science fiction here. We're talking about real reality. It is absolutely statable and irrefutable that since magnitude only moves in one direction, magnitude has one direction. That direction is magnitude, the loss of inertia. Force and motion, force and motion only have one direction. As the ancient Indians said, you can never set your feet in the same waters ever again. In other words, if you walk in a flowing stream or a flowing river, you're only going to stick your feet in the same waters one time and one time only. Magnitude only has one direction. Now, as I've discovered, and yes, it was my discovery, um, the phase shift, or what is specifically electromagnetic retardation, or what is polarized time, has discovered uh, not that attribute, but its effects on living systems by uh, Rawls and Davis, and uh, countless hundreds of you people have actually duplicated the experiments that they did, and the, which I showed you on YouTube. Just type in magnetism and seed growth, where you can get radically different results in uh, plant growth and uh, seed growth by exposing them to a different uh, polarized uh, portion of a coherent entity. The only thing that actually defines a magnet is field coherency. Within that field coherency we have a phase shift which exists at a ratio of 1 to 5. Therefore we have polarized time. So the three things that we can actually say definitively using retroductive logic and everything that I know about field theory, which is rather immense, and certainly so everything about magnetism, oh, that sounds like a really egotistical statement. It is, however, true. 
Well, the one thing that we can state, well, three things that we can actually state about time is that you can end it at the plane of inertia where there is no time. We have a non-Cartesian atemporal, I said atemporal, or a trans-Euclidean plane of inertia where time absolutely has no meaning, no existence, the notion of where and when. These are abstractions for phenomenal beings that exist in space and time. So we have A, one gear drive of time, shall we say, and let's talk about the second gear of time, like an automatic transition, transmission, right? First gear, second gear, and third gear. We have no time. We have inflation. We actually have the progress of time, which we all understand, you know, birth, old age, sickness, death, the actual motion of time. The third gear of time would be to create a large enough polarized, coherent, um, displacement of time. Time still moves on, but what we're able to do is to retard that time. Electromagnetic retardation. What we'd have is a bubble of polarized time, whereby which it would still be inflating, but at a rate that is significantly less than all surrounding magnitudes. So we would be able to travel in time, say, enter this bubble of coherent polarized field and actually able to exit it cutting the current and exit it at a, uh, at a future point in time. So time travel is possible, but only in one direction. Um, magnitude is time. And the only thing that gives magnitude to the entire universe is magnetism. Magnetism is literally the loss of inertia, the reciprocating processional hyperboloid of the coherent field which necessitates the creation of space. But space and time, just like a shadow, just like emptiness, these are not things. These are not principles. You have to be able to think with your brain in a completely different gear than you were ever brought up uh, thinking. It, it didn't even exist in Renaissance time. There is an ancient lost methodology. It's called apophaticism. It's also a different methodology, which I won't get into. It would take a long time to describe, where you're actually able to think in a completely different gear, if you will, of your brain, where you're actually able to extrapolate the solutions to extremely abstruse problems, um, um, formulas. And uh, nobody teaches that anywhere. And there really aren't any books on it. There are little snippets here and there. But you actually have to go into the works of Plotinus, Proclus, Numenius, Demetius, Simplicius, um, uh, some of the fragments of uh, Pythagoras, uh, go into Parmenides of Plato. Many of the works that are the most abstruse works of Plato are not from Plato himself. They belong to the Neo-Pythagoreans and the Pythagoreans and who knows before them. But we can never turn back the winds of time. Obviously the winds obviously can blow in many directions, but that which donates winds obviously blow. Uh, don't make a joke out of that. I'm sure someone's going to make a joke out of that. We cannot reverse the uh, winds of time. Time and inflation and magnitude and magnetism are but one and the same thing. They're human contrivances to extrapolate time out as a measure. Humans measure shit, okay? Mother Nature doesn't measure a goddamn thing. And until you understand that, you're never going to understand cosmic mechanics. Mother Nature is not a cross-eyed hooker on crack with a calculator or a MacBook or an iMac. You know, she doesn't calculate. Everything works off of pressure gradients and pressure mediations. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. All phenomena in the universe follow four primary things. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity. Those are four things. Okay, capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Space is not a thing. Space has no properties, Nikola Tesla, quote-unquote. Space has no properties because it is not a principle. Space is not a subject. You know what a subject is? It'd be like Bob, Sue, the Eiffel Tower, Paris, London. Those are subjects. They have in of their nature a principal Cartesian locus. They are principalities. They are subjects. There is no such thing as time. There is no such damn thing as space. 
There is no such damn thing as... Sure, there's a shadow there. You know, you stick this right here and view this light, I can see that shadow there. No, a shadow is nothing. A shadow is the absence of light. We cannot reify posterior attributes. Now, this is something you're going to have to wrap your damn brain around. To me, I mean, I don't even have to think about this stuff. Everybody else has to ponder it. Oh, that's a really egotistical statement. Well, wrap your brain around it. You cannot reify reification. If you don't know what that word is, look it up. It's not a complicated word. You cannot reify a posterior attribute. A shadow. Look, there it is. I made it appear. A shadow is a thing. No, a shadow is a privation of light. Time is not a thing, just like a shadow. Neither is space. These are posterior attributes. Now, <clears throat> I will begrudge you one thing. If you want to pull up a picture of Nikola Tesla, there is a secret in Nikola Tesla, and I'm the one person, no, I'm not the first person to obviously mention it, but I'm the one person that uh, discovered the secret of how important this is, because Nikola Tesla is the most important picture ever, where he's actually sitting with legs crossed, in front of one of his enormous coils, wearing a suit, he has one hand on his head. Very, very important. This is not like a casual photo. Back then, photographs were not easy. It's not like, you know, click. You know, you had to stage a fucking photograph. And people had time to think about what the hell that photograph was going to be. Nikola Tesla has one hand on his head, and his other hand is on a book. And what that book is... In all these assholes that talk about Nikola Tesla... Here's another photograph of Nikola Tesla. Here's all these books on Nikola Tesla. Most important thing Nikola Tesla is trying to tell you in the one photograph that he thought was really important, and I talk about this in my free book on magnetism, is his hand is on one specific goddamn book. That book is Roger Boscovich's Theory of Natural Philosophy. Now, half of it, if you find the book, you can get it on free on archive.org for download. Half of it will be in English, the other half will be in Latin. That book will warp your goddamn brain. Most of you, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nikola Tesla got a lot of his understanding of his inventions and the way his mind works from Roger Boscovich. Now, Roger Boscovich himself, look these people up, okay? Roger Boscovich got his training and methodology as some of the real, back in the days, in the 16th, 15th, 14th, 100th, uh, 14th century, if you were a rich bastard, okay, your child studied Plato. Okay, your child studied Aristotle. Your child had learned a special and magical way to work their brain to figure out really. See, if you took a modern people, you could take any PhD person on Earth. Okay, it's like, well, these people are really smart. You know, we're a lot more advanced than those assholes back then were. Just give them like Roger Boscovich's theory of natural philosophy. Give them the works of Plotinus. They will sit there and they will twitch and drool. As if they've been electrocuted. They, the the uh, the thinking in these um, these books, these voluminous manuals, are so difficult for them that their minds cannot penetrate it. Human beings actually have de-evolved. We think we're so advanced because we have been creative little creatures and come up with stuff like this and iPads and you know DSLRs. We're not. Anyway, so there's the secret of time. All right, you've heard it here. Time only moves in one direction. You actually can either halt it at the plane of inertia where time does not exist. You can ride it, just like riding the waves, or you actually can retard it by entering into a coherent, polarized time bubble, just as exists on any magnet which affects living systems. As Rawls and Davis wrote three books about, and of which I've made at least 20 videos about, and of which hundreds of you have made duplicate experiments with seeds and crickets and animals and worms. You can do all sorts of crazy-ass experiments using uh, the North Pole and the South Pole to affect living systems. Seeds, crickets, animals, you know, all sorts of chickens, worms, you know, whatever the hell you want. Tape it to your crotch for all I care. Don't try that experiment. <laughs> so there's the secret of time. Okay? Only moves in one direction. We'll never be able to go back in time. But we actually can time travel to the future. That is an absolute possibility. With 100%, actually I'll say 200% certainty. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make a donation. If not, tell me jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Bye.